Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar event. It is promptly noon Eastern time. My name is Joshua, and I'm going to be your presenter for today's webinar, Church Windows webinar event. We're here to talk about membership searches using Find. Before we get started on our topic here, a few things for those of you that have been here before. You know, please bear with me while I go through this for those who have not joined us or are joining us for the first time. If you uh, click the little red arrow at the top of your control panel, your webinar control panel there to minimize the little task bar, that'll allow you to minimize that or drag it off to your second desktop if you've got a dual monitor set up. will allow you to get a full visual presentation or effect of the presentation or event today. Um, as always, the uh, recording of this particular webinar event will be available on our YouTube channel by no later than this coming Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. If you have questions for me, please type those in the questions portion of the control panel. <clears throat> it, it's just me today, but I will do my best to keep an eye on those and see what I can't do to get those questions answered for folks after, of course, repeating it for everyone's benefit. If you've seen what you came to see, by all means, you may leave the webinar event. We thank you so much in advance for attending. We hope you find it helpful. And again, we do ask that you do keep the questions topical. Um, so basically about the find and using find. Now we're going to look at the grid, the find grid, a lot in our, in our webinar today, but we're not going to be discussing working with the grid. So I just want to make sure that that distinction is made very clear. Um, I think we do have another existing recording of working with the grid out on our YouTube channel and I'm sure we'll have another live webinar event on that top, uh, topic here at some point. I'm going to be wrapping up at 20 minutes after no later than but if you have questions I'm certainly happy to stick around and answer those. Um, and uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Our book today that we're working out of is out of our membership 102 workbook. Uh, I think it's pages 9 through 16. If you don't have a Church Windows workbook, you may, of course, uh, don't have that. You can purchase those from our Church Windows store. Uh, they're very helpful. A lot of folks really like those. So just FYI, that's what we're using as our basis for our webinar topic today. All right, so I like to start this event by saying that Find is one of the most powerful tools in the software in conjunction with the grid, okay? Uh, you know, Find's can occur basically you're finding one certain record or you're finding a group of records or you're finding uh, you know we don't have to go up to things like reports here reports list labels reports directory export labels or email in order to find people okay if we just have this wonderful powerful tool up here in the upper left of our membership household called find it's in visitors as well everybody should see that let me draw an arrow here steer some focus should be in the upper left there. Um, and so again, we're going to kind of talk through that. You can use find to find all kinds of things in church windows. Okay. Again, when when we you do a find, enter a find or, or start a find and we click go and it reveals, it'll take us to the find grid whenever it finds two or more records in the database that meet our requested criteria. Okay finds one of the first and foremost important things to understand about the find feature in church windows membership is when I use find here I'm in the members database I'm only searching in members I'm not including visitors here and the opposite is true when I'm in visitors if I use find there I'm only searching the visitors database I'm not searching members if we want to search or include people from both databases we should really go up and use something like reports here reports directory export where we can include those in both databases okay uh, so that's just a very important thing to understand about how what find does is it searches the databases separate separately not simultaneously or together okay um, again the grid will find will open the grid if more than one person meets the requested criteria Again, membership finds done in membership will only include people stored in members. Visitors will only include finds will only include those stored in visitors. Um, you can also decide what information fields you want to display on your grid. Again, that's as much as I'm going to go into it. Okay, really. 
Um, you can generate reports from the grid using find. Okay, You can even add data, and we'll show that here in just a moment. So the most common find is, if I simply click the find button in the upper left, notice here that the screen goes blank. You know, it's basically saying, okay, what do you want me to find? Well, the, by default, Church Windows is coded in such a way where the cursor is automatically flashing in your name field here in the upper right corner under your individual record. Okay, so without having to click anything, you don't have to click in the name field or anything else. You can just simply click, I'm going to try it again, so click Find, and all I'm going to do is reach over to me, my keyboard and start typing the name of the person that I'm seeking. So I'm looking for Jack West. There it is. I can use my up and down arrows if I wish to search for other people that are around that or in the family. But once I've highlighted the name I want, I can either hit enter or click on that name and then hit enter or click go. And that will then take me to the particular individual that I'm seeking. Okay. So the most common use of find is when we're searching for simply one record or one name in either our members or our visitors databases. Okay. Again, that's a very common misunderstanding is folks go find and then they think they have to click in the name field when that's not the case. All you have to do is click find, simply reach over to your keyboard, start typing, it'll be in the name field automatically for you. Okay. Um, another common use of find, and this is one that folks are frequently unaware of when I'm working with folks on support calls, is finding everybody in my database. So if I click find, and again, since my cursor's defaulting into my name field on the individual record, if all I do is go up to go in the upper left-hand corner, it's then going to take us to our member find grid here, and it's going to list everybody in my members, members database that is not assigned a reason for termination. Okay. There's often a lot of questions about that. Is like, well, why am I seeing the same household like Mrs. Jen Arnold listed here twice at the top? That's because we're seeing multiple people there. You're looking at the household mailing label here, which is common to the entire household. So what we're seeing here really are different individuals that are reside in the same household. So if I scroll further to the right, we notice here we've got our column called last name, first name and it is showing Arnold Jen and Arnold Richards. So two different individuals or more in the same household. So mailing label, of course, is the name of the household versus the name of the individuals within a in the household. Okay? So again, this is where maybe using your options up here to change how the grid is being displayed or what you see on it may prove to be uh, very helpful. Again, there is a webinar, a recording of a previous webinar, I'm 99% sure, out on our YouTube channel about working with the find grid here and how you can manipulate and work with that. Again, in conjunction with this particular webinar event, I think it will be very helpful for you. Okay? So again, to find everyone in either members or visitors, I would simply click find, go right over and click go, and that takes me to my member find grid, which then displays all of the people that I have in my, either one of those databases spread out across the screen horizontally. Um, so by default, the grid does display everything. And if I continue to scroll right, we see all kinds of information here. Okay? And again, we can use options to change that if we wish. Again, we're not going to get into that with too much detail here. Okay. So again, find is going to take us to the grid when it finds two or more people in the same database that meet our criteria. So finding on a code. Uh, a common one here that we want to do is like, uh, like status code, for example. I want to find all of my active members in my membership database. So we simply click find. We then go over here to the right-hand side to our uh, status code field right here and we can click the down arrow or if I know the code I can simply type that in or if we click the down arrow I can just double click on it so here's my active members at the top so I double click on that it populates with number one and then I simply click go and it again takes me to my find grid a nice handy feature about the find grid here of course uh, that's again commonly overlooked is notice here in the upper left hand corner I do have a count right up here. So when I did my find here in members, it tells me clearly that I have 38 people in my members database that have an active status member status code assigned. 
So if all I'm seeking is the account, the grid works per perfectly for that. Okay. So you can do that on any list field or code. Um, that would be true for anything with these little down arrows here, uh, the drop down arrow that re reveals a list of codes. Okay. Again, another common one would be um, a common search here is my terminated records, folks that are no longer you know, participating or with our church due to whatever reason, whether they've passed or whether they've left our church and gone, moved out of town or what have you. If they're no longer considered active with our church and we've assigned them a reason for termination, we can use the find to find those. Okay, so if again a common use of find here is again one of the things we have to remember is we're using Microsoft based applications here. So let's say I don't know what the reason for termination was that I signed to somebody, so I'm going to type in my wildcard asterisk. So basically the asterisk is saying, I want you to display or the system to display for me a list of anyone who has this field popula populated no matter what the code is. So once I type in my asterisk under reason for termination and click go, here are my list of my terminated records. Again, displayed at the grid. Yeah, these folks don't appear in my search list. So when I type in and search for a specific name here, uh, like, so let's see here. Uh, let's find somebody here that we can use, like uh, Joan Lamb. So here we go to the right, and we who is the record we're searching for? So it's Joan. So if I click on Find, and I type in Lamb, notice it doesn't find anyone there because there's she's terminated. Um, the only way I can find my terminated records is by querying on the Reason for Termination field. I can ask for a specific code here. Again, it's a list field. So I can choose a specific code from the list if I wish and click go just like I did with my status code. Okay. Um, another common use of find is a, a search or query is a, or unknown here again. We may be looking at you know, learning something new here today on everything. If we click find, we can find on a range of codes using a colon. So a common one here is like under mailing code. So right here we see you know, we've got all mailings, out-of-towners, newsletter only, no mailings. So what we want to find is I want to find a list of those folks who have all mailings through newsletter only. So basically A through NL. So I can now click, type in A colon NL colon representing through and click go. And over here on the right hand side We've got our, our column called mailing code, and we notice that everybody in that list has an A, B, or an NL mailing code assigned. All right. Um, and that works for not just for list fields as well, but for other types of uh, fields, like date fields, for example. Okay. Um, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Find is so powerful. It really is. Um, again, a common one is groups and classes. Again, unknown, uh, often unknown or not known about here is that under our like clasping hands up here, our groups and classes are the little light bulb for our skills and interests. We can use find to find those as well. So if I click on my groups and classes, click on find, either type in the code or choose a particular committee or group. So in this case, we're going to find our trustees. And again, I can either double click on it or highlight it and click, you know, and, and add it. Once it's in the field, I can simply click go. And again, it takes me to my find grid with my list of all of my trustees. So from here, I can go up to either email or print, or there's all kinds of things I can do with this here. Okay. Once I have my list, Okay, uh, similar for skills and interests. If I roll over to the light bulb, uh, to click in there and I choose, say, carpentry or double click on it and it populates, I close out of my list, click, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's click find. Again, I can type in the code carpentry and click go and it again takes me to my list. So it's a lot easier for me to use the find to find these 
five folks who have volunteered their carpentry skills for the church than it is for me to go through and manually find them. Okay. Um, there are all kinds of ways you can use find as long as you're willing to search members separately from visitors or you don't have to include folks from both databases. And again, one of the things here, again, that you'll find that you can talk about or you'll find and you'll learn about in the using or working with the Find Grid video is, you know, you can edit information right here at the grid without having to, uh, no save required, no need to go to individual records. You can just edit it right here. Finding on combine criteria. We've got about five minutes left here, so I better move things along. So here, if I go Find, and I want to find, say, all of my people, active members in the database with an email address, so again, I would put in status code of 1 and email address. I would type in my wildcard asterisk and click Go. And here are all of those folks, 23 records. Again, if I scroll right, I should be able to find my status code of A, stat, I'm sorry, status code of 1, and email address over here is populated. So it's an AND query. Status code is equal to 1, and email is not blank, essentially. Okay? Um, finding, we did talk about finding on a range, on a range with other information. So let's say that I'm searching for a list of those who've passed away within a particular time period. I click Find. Again, I would put my reason for termination in here and my code. And then we would go down to termination date. And let's say we were wanting to find uh, in 2013, I would simply enter 01012013 colon 1231 2013. I can do this for virtually any date range I wish. And again, uh, notice in the dates, no slashes or dashes, just month, day, and year, separated by a colon. Click go. And there are my list of my terminated folks for 2013. Um, yeah, there's no restriction in terms of how many fields you can find using find, uh, provided the criteria really is an and. It's not, there's no way to enter an or query here, OK? Um, so yeah, just an FYI, generally the query is going to wind up using, uh, is going to be generally an and query, OK? Uh, you know, status code is equal to active and email address is not blank. It's not or email address is not blank, it's and. So it's got to be inclusive in, in virtually all cases. All right, so we can save these finds too. So uh, again, uh, let's do another example. We're trying to, we're hosting a singles event for those that are in our database who are divorced, widowed, separated, or single. So we can have a social event, and we want to have, try to have this on a monthly basis. So this is going to be a query we're going to do over again you know, each month, basically. So I can go to marital status after clicking find, and my codes are sequential here. So we're going to do uh, divorce through widower, so D through W. So as we've learned here, we're going to do D colon W, and click go. Um, then when we're here at our list, we would go up to save, and then right up here we're going to name our, fi our find, calling it uh, something like uh, single social group, singles social group, and we click save. Selection's been saved, so now I can close out and do whatever I need to, going email or print or what have you, or send labels. Now it's next month. I want to re, you know, re-invite or send out a new invitation with any updated records in my database. I simply right-click over Find, and notice we see the one called Single Social Group there. When I click on that, it does the find for me automatically and takes me to my grid. All of the new names that, have ch that I've changed my marital status for will automatically be brought into the list. Okay. And finally, to delete a saved find, I would click on Save. And then right here on the right side, click Maintain List of Saved Member Finds. And then I would choose you know, my single social group or whatever ones I have from the list. Uh, or I'm sorry, click the Delete Saved Member Find, choose the one I want from the list, and simply click Delete Saved uh, Member Find. Delete so Single Social Group, click Yes, and it's now gone.
Okay. Um, but that again, folks, hopefully kind of gives you some pointers to how you find can really, really help you. As I say on my support, you know, on, on my support calls, I think this is probably one of the most commonly underused features in the software as folks are not aware of how powerful that find really is. Okay. So, you know, play with it. You can't break it. If you, you know, if you do, then I need to know how you did it so I can get it my developers to fix it. Okay. So play with this. Um, learning how to do it and what to do with it is really going to help your understanding of how Church Windows works for sure. All right, so I've seen what I, I'm talked about, what I'm here to talk about. Let me see what questions we got out here. Cleaning up my newsletter, mailing labels, duplicates, etc. When someone is no longer a member or visitor, how to find? Well, yeah, I think, Susan, that goes back to the whole yeah, reason for termination. If Assuming you've terminated them, again, you would click find and either type in the specific code in reason for termination or you would type in the wildcard asterisk and then choose them from the grid. So right here, then you would find the name you want, click go to at the top, and it takes you right into their record. Uh, okay, how would you look for active with no email? Okay, well that Barbara, that again is not, we're not able to do that using the find grid because that's a negative query. So uh, so basically email is equal to blank is not an option when doing find. So we would have to go up to something like reports here, reports directory, export, you know, enter my status code of member, and then under my email address field, then I would have the option to choose here is blank. So that would be the only way to do that. Yeah, the find only searches for folks whose information is populated. It doesn't look for those who doesn't don't have it populated. I mean, you could certainly visually go through the list, perhaps, and see if you could find it there, you know, by going find, go, you know, and then looking over, you know, going over to, say, your email address field. And then if we right-click over, again, email and choose sort of sending, you know, if I go here, my where's my email address field? There it is. Over here on the right now, notice we've got the e field called email, and anybody's email addresses are blank, float right to the top because there's no there's it doesn't know how to sort them. There's nothing to sort. So that would be the way to really find those at uh, at the grid. The only way to find those at the grid. Uh, so you would in this case probably what we would do there would be to go find to status code of active. Well, I guess there is a way to do it go and then again finding our email address column here so I found all of my active members then finding the column called email address again right clicking and choose sort ascending and then it puts all of my active members with no email at the top so I guess there is a way to do it just not terribly clean so I hope that helps Good. I'm glad. Um, okay, folks. Well, I'm just waiting to see if there's other questions that are coming in. Uh, I don't see anything so far. While we're waiting here to see if they are, again, folks, if you've not already checked it out before, please, you know, just remember to go to uh, youtube.com forward slash church windows. That'll take you to our YouTube channel with our current list of videos here under a variety of playlists. You know, notice here we've got almost 40 videos on donations alone, 40 on membership. Uh, there's just 35 on accounting. I mean, we've got hours and hours of the webinar events out here that we've got recordings of already in a variety of topics. Okay, well, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. Again, we hope this has been helpful. Um, if you do have other questions, you know, we uh, hope to see you at another Church Windows webinar event. Or um, if, uh, if you have other questions, please don't hesitate to contact our support staff, 800-533-5227. And again, we thank you so much for attending. I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar for everyone. Thank you all so much. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.